How does this offense? I know it's a week to week league and all that stuff, but how does this offense find this rhythm again? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it's going to come down. You know, we need to score more points, obviously. Uh, but ran the ball for 180 yards, I think over five a carry. You know, Kyler completed 72% of his passes. So I think we got to look at the areas that prevented us from putting points on the board. You know, can be a little bit better on money downs. I think that's got to show up here in the next couple of weeks. A little bit more explosive in the passing game. But I think there's a lot of good on that tape. But I think if we can clean up a couple of those areas, we can get more points on the board. I think that's going to be critical to our success. Uh, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think that's always going to be the case when you're limiting. It takes 11 people to be good in those areas. You know, those are critical situations. You're going to have a lot of one on ones. Got to be great from a play call and a design standpoint. Uh, they're high leverage situations. So I think we got to kind of look at everything. And if we can get a little better in a number of areas, I think our execution in those areas can take a step up. This has been a, kind of a constant for Kyler's whole career, even before you got here. But it's been noted he only had the one rush on the scramble. And it seems like over his career, if he gets a handful of runs, it's better for the team than when he doesn't. How, how do you do you address that at all? Is that something that you guys actually would look at him in the in the, in the running game, or it, not really? A little of both. I think it's some of it you can scheme it up where he's he's run the ball. Other times it's extending plays. Like some of those runs throughout his career have been off schedule passes that he breaks the line of scrimmage. You know, it's not like those are called runs all the time and he's very dynamic in that area. Sometimes teams do some good things to take that away. Sometimes we have, you know, issues in other areas that lead to him not being able to take advantage of that. So I think it's a combination of all of those things. But certainly, you know, we feel confident with him with the ball in his hand in, in both phases and, and gives us a good chance to put up points. You mentioned the completion percentage. And I'm curious your thoughts generally on the league where completion percentages seem to be really going up, but the average yards per completion is down. And it was low for, it was even low for Jaden Daniels on Sunday. It was nine yards per completion. What, what's overall your thought on that and just the way offenses are attacking teams? I think it's kind of the ebb and flow of the NFL game. You know, if you look around the league, it's offenses do something, defenses react. I think that's kind of the nature of the sport over time. So for a while there, it was every pass was going down the field, big explosive passes. You're getting a ton of one-on-ones in single high. You know, defenses adapted, more shell, different pressures, different front structures to try to take some of that away. And I think that's kind of the evolution of the game as a whole. Uh, obviously, you saw a little bit of it on both sides in our game, but I think that's kind of indicative of that. Does that make it hard sometimes to sustain an offense, especially on drives, if you're having to throw underneath and certainly not getting a penalty or making a mistake, is that, does that make it a little bit harder? Is that, is that essentially what defenses are challenging teams to do? To a point, I, certainly. I mean, if, if we're going to, you know, if you score on one play for 80 yards as opposed to four plays at 20 apiece, you have three less plays you have to be successful on across the board, which is certainly going to raise your level of, you know, execution. Um, but I think it does give avenues for missed tackles and extended plays and off schedules and, and catch after, you know, run after catch. I think those things become maybe more critical to create some of those explosive plays. Um, but yeah, sure. The offense has scored on its opening drive every week. What do you attribute the fast start to, and what's the challenge been to sustain that throughout the rest of the game and, and to start the second half as well? Yeah, I think a, a big portion of that start speaks to the players. You know, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think they, they come out ready to go. I think that we executed at a high level early in the game. Obviously, as you said, four straight games with touchdown drives is awesome. Um, you know, as to the sustainability, I think that it takes all of us to be successful, you know, throughout the game, and I think we need to be better in that area. You know, we'd like to score every drive, obviously. I think that goes without saying, but you know, I, I don't feel a drastic difference in them or how we're doing things or what we're doing. I think we can clean up a couple things in all areas to be better, but um, I think that's something to build on. I think it's something we look at and say, "Hey, I know we can do it. Now we need to do it consistently." John said that uh, he thought Marv's performance on Sunday was his best game yet. Do you agree with that? And why? I do. I, I think he just he, he seemed really comfortable in the offense. I thought he was coming off the ball. I know that's something JG hit on. Um, you know, I think you saw him thinking less and less, which is always what you look for in young players is kind of throughout those first couple of games. You know, are they reacting or are they thinking? And I think you saw that from him, which was good to see. Uh, I mean, a host of things. I think it takes, you know, and I know JJ said this, it takes all of us to do that. It takes pass protection, it takes the coverage, it takes the route, it takes the execution. So I, I really can't attribute it to one area, but something we certainly need to look at. Been, he's been very active in the first quarter throughout the season, say, the first week. But then there was drop off after that, mm -hmm. second or third quarters, and then go up a little bit in the fourth. Why do you think there's such a drop off consistently in the second or third quarter? And even on Sunday, Kyler said he could feel it happen during the game. So why do you think this isn't how you fix it? I think a big portion of that the last two weeks is we haven't been able to stay on the field. 
you know, if you're not converting on money downs, you're getting less plays in those areas. And, and in those two quarters, we've struggled to convert on third down. So we're getting less opportunities at the plate. I think that's a big part of it. Okay. Jonathan said that there were some good conversations after that game about adjusting or, or adapting, maybe not wholesale changes. Is there anything that you feel like you need to do just playing differently, or is it just about executing what you're doing? A combination of both. I know that's kind of an easy answer, but I think that's true when you win as much as it is when you lose. Like every week you walk out off the field and say, we need to adjust this. This isn't good enough. If we want to get to where we want to go, we want to tweak, change. I mean, that was true after the LA game, as it's going to be true after the Detroit game and the most recent game. So, um, you know, I, I think that's always the case. I, I certainly believe in what we're doing, you know, and I, you know, some, a couple of things we've talked about give me confidence in what we're doing and who's doing it. Um, so I, I don't see that as a major change moving forward week to week. No fundamental changes. It's just more about tweaks. Post game on Marv, Kyler had said you have to get your best players the ball in those critical moments. What is the fine line of getting your best players the ball without forcing it? It's exactly as you just said it. I mean that that's it. And if there was a you know that's a balance you have to strike, and it's not always easy because. They also know who your best players are in critical moments, and they want their best players there or their best coverage there. So it's a fine line between making sure that you're designing things and giving him the opportunity or maybe throwing him the ball or getting him open on the route. Uh, but it's also saying, all right, are they giving us that opportunity? Do we have that open? Or are we forcing the ball into a look where it's not going to be clean? He's not having a high chance of success. I think that's a very fine line that's really important to, to walk. Can you give a couple of specific examples of what's breaking down on third down? Uh, you know, I, I, again, I think it's a, a whole host of things. I, I think it's, it takes 11 people to be good in the passing game and the run game. You know, you look, some of those third down conversions have come in the run game where maybe we're not hitting the hole we want to, maybe the blocking's not perfect, but I, I really think it, it, it'd be hard to sit here without the tape and say, like, this is where we need to improve. I think it really takes all of us. Back to the Kyler runs, there have only been a handful of design runs for him this season. It's something you had mentioned in training camp, maybe getting involved more. What's, why is that not happening? Or what's the reason for that? I think a lot of it's defensive look. You know, they know he's dynamic with the ball in his hand. A lot of your quarterback runs are read runs or decisions to be made post snap. And if they're going to, you know, dictate, it's also one of the reasons James is having a lot of success because they're attributing a lot of their defense to what Kyler's doing. What do you see is a lot of challenges, I'm sure, but some of the bigger challenges going against that 49ers defense. I think the personnel, I, I think, is certainly a big one. You know, 97, probably the best. You know, we, we faced another 97 who's pretty good. This guy is as good, if not better. Um, you know, Mike Linebacker, one of the best in the league. I mean, he's been doing it at such a high level for such a long time. I have so much respect for him. You know, really at all three levels. The safety, you know, obviously who got hurt against us last year is a phenomenal player. I think the scheme is very sound. It allows them to play fast. I think it's really well coached. You know, I know there's been some different coordinators over time, but I think the system has stayed very consistent. You have players who have been in a long time, which I think allows them to play at a really high level.